Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel, Dr. Barkis of Thalmology Tutorials. Today we will discuss about the symptoms and signs of the corneal ulcer. So initially I will be discussing the common symptoms and the signs for all corneal ulcers and later I will discuss in particular about the bacterial corneal ulcer and briefly I will tell about the features of different causes of this bacterial corneal ulcer. Okay, so without much delay let's begin our video. So this is actually a part of the previous video which I had to cover that is the bacteria which will penetrate the intact cornea. As I had already discussed the epithelial breach and the invasion by bacteria both are important to lead to corneal ulcer but still there are few bacteria which can invade the intact corneal epithelium. Though there is no corneal epithelium these can lead to the corneal ulcer. The examples are the gonococci, meningococci, cornobacterium diphtheriae. Haemophilus aegypticus and the Listeria. So this is one of the commonly asked viva questions. Next moving on to the symptoms and signs of the corneal ulcer. So how the disease progresses in the cornea after the infection depends upon two factors that is virulence of the organism as well as the host defense mechanism. Some organisms like Pseudomonas or the gonococci can lead to rapid destruction of the cornea whereas few organisms like non-tuberculous mycobacterium or the streptococcus pyridans can lead to just indolent ulcers. Whereas the cornebacterium diphtheria, though it is a normal flora of the conjunctiva, can cause the infection if the host defense is compromised. Okay, so what are the symptoms of corneal ulcer? As you know, any breach in the cornea will lead to intense pain. So the pain will be there, foreign body sensation, okay, and the watering of the eyes, that is the reflex watering whenever there is corneal ulcer. The photophobia, that is inability to open the eyes in ambient light. There can be blurred vision or decreased vision depending upon the extent and location of the ulcer and there is redness. So these are the complaints with which the corneal ulcer patient will present with. Next moving on to the signs of the corneal ulcer. Whenever you are examining the corneal ulcer, don't just examine the cornea and leave it. Okay, examine whole eye right from the lids up to the anterior vitreous which may give a clue to the cause for the corneal ulcer and even to explain the prognosis to the patient. Okay. So first thing is as you know the visual acuity, the vision as I told it can be blurred to variable extent depending upon the location and the extent of the corneal ulcer. If it is in the center it will cause significant decrease in the vision, if it is in the periphery it may lead to slight blurring of the vision. Then coming to the facial appearance, so this is one of the most neglected thing which we don't appreciate at all. So examine the patient in torchlight or examine the patient as a whole and look for the facial appearance. There can be a hidden facial nerve palsy which could be the cause for the corneal ulcer. So unless you treat the facial nerve palsy that is at least the lack of thalamus, the corneal ulcer will not recover. So carefully look for the facial appearance and rule out the facial nerve palsy. Here again check for the Bell's phenomena. If the Bell's phenomena is poor, again the patient may end up in the exposure keratitis and if you don't take care of the poor Bell's phenomena, the ulcer will not heal. Examining the eyelids again becomes important because so any abnormality in the eyelids like the entropion, trichiasis or the blepharitis can lead to the corneal ulcer formation. So you should take care of the eyelids before treating the corneal ulcer. Then the lid closure as I explained that is the Bell's phenomena you should look into. Any problem with the lid closure like secondary to either proptosis or the lid retraction. So these things should be taken care when you are treating the corneal ulcer. The third important thing is the lesor lacrimal apparatus which is one of the most important when you really want to treat the corneal ulcer. If you miss the lacrimal apparatus system, that is if you don't do at least the lacrimal syringing or the regurgitation test at least, you may miss a big clue to the cause for the corneal ulcer. So the patient may be harboring the infecting organisms there in the lacrimal sac which constantly comes and infects the cornea. So do the regurgitation test at least before going into the corneal examination. The corneal sensation I have put up here only because this is again the neglected part. Once you examine the cornea and come to the diagnosis, you will forget to check the corneal sensation. So please make sure that corneal sensations are intact, then you can go ahead with the treatment. So after these signs, come to the proper examination of the eye, either with torchlight or by the slit lamp examination. So the first thing is the eyelid margin. You have already seen the eyelid margin before, but again examine under the slit lamp. Look for the meibomian gland dysfunction or there can be ulcerations at the lid margin or the eyelash abnormalities which are well appreciated in the slit lamp examination. Then before going to the conjunctiva, 
carefully examine for the tear film also so the patient may be suffering from the dry eye okay or there could be some debris in the tear film which can be the cause for your corneal ulcer so by all this examination you are finding out the possible cause for the corneal ulcer thereby the treatment becomes easy the next structure in the examination is the conjunctiva so in the conjunctiva look for conjunctival discharge patient may be having conjunctivitis which might have ended as the keratitis or the inflammations of the conjunctiva look for the signs of conjunctival inflammation like follicles and the papillae okay there can be cicatrization or the keratinization of the conjunctiva there may be even membranes in the conjunctiva okay or ulcers or the conjunctiva so all these give a clue to the possible cause for the corneal ulcer okay and these things also be simultaneously treated along with the corneal ulcer treatment and in the conjunctiva you should also look for the limbal ischemia okay which could be secondary to any of your chemical injuries and that could be the reason for the corneal ulcer and carefully look for the filtering blep if there is a ulcer in the superior part of the cornea which can be a reason for the dry eye or the facet formation later on leading to the corneal ulcer in the sclera look for the inflammation of the sclera that is scleritis ulcer formation or thinning of the sclera and the nodules so all these may be associated with the corneal ulcer especially the non infective type of corneal ulcers okay so corneal examination i will explain in detail later so in the anterior chamber again carefully look for the ac cells and flare in the anterior vitreous again examine the cells in the anterior vitreous which tells that the infection has progressed beyond the corneal limits don't forget to check the intraocular pressure at least digitally through the lower eyelid just palpate the globe and look for the firmness of the globe if it is hard you have to treat with anti glaucoma medications along with the treatment of the corneal ulcer coming to the examination of the cornea proper in the cornea you have a corneal ulcer which is sitting there so when you are describing the corneal ulcer first thing is mention about the number means there is either a single corneal ulcer or multiple corneal ulcer then comes the location whether it is central or peripheral or whether it is around the corneal nerves that is perineural or even it can be adjacent to the surgical or the traumatic wound okay so mention where exactly the corneal ulcer is the next is the size of the corneal ulcer use the slit lamp beam to accurately measure the size of the corneal ulcer both horizontally and vertically then come to the shape of the corneal ulcer the shape can be either round or oval or it can be ring shaped or there can be multiple satellite lesions so examine all those and make a mention then the depth of the corneal ulcer as i have discussed in my previous video that is that is the margin edge and the floor of the ulcer so comment about all these whether the margins are edematous or flat okay how is the edge whether it is sloping edge or the straight cut edge and mention about the floor whether the floor is having the inflammatory cells or it is healing floor whatever it is so describe the margin edge and the depth of the corneal ulcer so after describing the corneal ulcer go to the epithelial defect because all the corneal ulcers may not be associated with the epithelial defect as i told so if there is a epithelial defect make a mention of it and the look for punctate keratopathy whether there is edema of the surrounding corneal tissue whether there is stromal infiltration in the surrounding corneal tissue and the thinning of the cornea and the thinning of the cornea which is well assessed when you are commenting about the depth of the corneal ulcer that is after making a slit beam so whenever you are examining the corneal ulcer it should be examined under diffuse light examination followed by slit examination of the cornea and the slits taken exactly at the cornea okay so if the cornea there are if there are multiple corneal ulcers you have to make separate slit at each corneal ulcer and describe each corneal ulcer under these settings okay so these are the things which are common for all the corneal ulcers it need not be for the bacterial corneal ulcer under these settings you can describe any corneal ulcer next moving on to the features which are specific for the bacterial corneal ulcer here the symptoms of the patient are usually correlating with the examination findings unlike the fungal corneal ulcer where the patient is almost asymptomatic but the ulcer is very much severe whereas in case of bacterial corneal ulcer the symptoms usually correlate with the corneal findings okay so how this bacterial corneal ulcer look usually these are dense separative stromal infiltrates which are more than 1 mm in size at least the edges are very much indistinct as it's shown in this picture so the central part is the corneal ulcer the blue one is the edema which is shown here 
so the corneal ulcer is suppurative dense corneal ulcer with a stromal infiltration size of more than 1 mm surrounded by the zone of edema and also there is white cell infiltration or the stromal infiltration okay and it may or may not be associated with the epithelial defect always when do you call the ulcer as very severe okay so if the ulcer is progressing very rapidly that is rapid progression of the ulcer or the infiltration is becoming more than 6 mm in size or the depth of involvement is more than one third of the stroma or if there is impending perforation or the scleral involvement so all these tell that the patient is suffering from very severe corneal ulcer that is rapid progression of the corneal ulcer the stromal infiltration more than 6 mm involving more than one third of the stroma and impending perforation and the scleral involvement okay so which needs aggressive treatment along with the systemic antibiotics so which are the organisms which lead to such a rapid progression of the corneal ulcer the organisms are staphylococcus aureus pneumococci streptococci and the pseudomonas okay so let me repeat staphylococcus pneumococci streptococcus and pseudomonas aeruginosa so these are the organisms which will lead to severe bacterial corneal ulcer so let's discuss how the corneal ulcer will look depending upon the causative organism so if the causative organism is the staph aureus then the corneal lesion is round or oval as it is shown with a dense infiltration which is shown again in the green with distinct borders okay the borders are very much clear but this ulcer will also progress very rapidly with the corneal infiltration and the moderate ac reaction there can be formation of stromal microabscess with ill-defined borders so those are the features of the ulcer due to staph aureus so when it comes to non aureus staphylococcus aureus these are coagulase negative organisms they cause opportunistic infection in the compromised corneas when it comes to the ulcer the ulcer is very superficial as it is seen in this cut section you can make out the ulcer is very much superficial and it is slowly progressive with a surrounding clear cornea the ac reaction is either mild or minimal okay so if you come to the pneumococcal corneal ulcer this usually follows the corneal trauma or can be associated with the dacrocystitis or the blep infection. Okay. When you describe the ulcer, it is usually acute in onset, purulent and rapidly progressive with a deep stromal abscess. As you can see in this cut section, there is deep stromal abscess with a severe AC reaction to the extent that it will form the hypopia and there is retrocorneal membrane and the perforation is common in pneumococcal corneal ulcers. If you move to the pseudomonas corneal ulcer, pseudomonas is a gram negative pathogen more common in the contact lens users. Ulcer is with a dense stromal infiltration which is shown in the green color with a marked separation and the liquefactive necrosis and these ulcer tend to form the desmetoseal followed by the perforation of the corneal ulcer. So these are about the specific features depending upon the etiological agent. So the things like the symptoms and the initial signs which I have explained are common for all the corneal ulcers. You can write it even for the non-infective corneal ulcers as well and specific features for the bacterial ulcers I have explained. So hope this video on the symptoms and signs are useful to all of you. If you like my videos, please do subscribe to my channel. Press the bell icon for further notifications. Please do like and share my videos.